we just thank you for allowing Dr. Ron to come and bring the word. We pray, Lord, that every ear hears, every heart receives, every mind just be cleared to receive this word of what he's got to say, because it is absolutely incredible. And those lives will be transformed. I am I have no doubt about it. So, Father, we just thank you, and we praise your name, and we give you all the praise and the glory, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen, amen. Let's receive Dr. Clark. Thank you. She is the most beautiful woman in the world. And I didn't kiss your wife, I kissed mine. And, you know, I had an entire church. We were holding a revival in Katali, of all places. And uh, I, I shouldn't say this over the. <laughs> the TV, but I'll say it anyway. <clears throat> we were holding a revival, and uh, it's my habit, has been my habit since we've been together, and I married her at an altar, and I will continue to kiss her at altars. And uh, this, they sent 18 elders to rebuke me. <laughs> 18 came to the hotel, and we had an official meeting, and uh, I, I, I told them, I said, I mean no offense, but if it offends you, I, I don't really care. Because I, I did marry this woman at an altar. Do you know what I'm saying? And I didn't kiss their wife. And I said to some of them, I said, and some of you are kissing other men's wives, and you're here trying to straighten me out for the love affair that I'm having with my wife. Well, we had revival in that church, and that revival went on for eight weeks, and the church tripled in size, and you know, when the elders get saved, then the, you know the whole church is going to get saved, so it was really a great time, and um, you can cut that right out of, the, out of the YouTube thing or whatever. Listen, <clears throat> I have preached myself hoarse. Uh, from this last service, we had too much. I may be in trouble when Bishop Jimmy gets back. I mean, I really. You, you want me to? Should, should I hold back a little and just? You know, I. I we love this church. You know, there. I've been to over somewhere between three and. I can't do Dawa. No, I. I can't. It's too much. I need something cold. I'm opposite. Americans are opposite. You know, I'm the only one that will have a cold beverage out in the Sideland. They, they think I've lost my mind out there. Where was I? I was saying something. Oh, I love this church. You know, I, um, we've, I've probably been to over 400, preached in over 400 deliverance churches. You know, Bishop uh, Mark Kariuki invited us here for the first time back in 2014 to hold revivals. And he said that I could go to any deliverance church I want to go to. Don't have to call. Don't have to ask for permission. And so we've been to a lot of churches. And there's very few that Rhonda and I want to come to when we get a break and rest except this one. I could go to, amen. Now, we, we do love uh, Bishop uh, JB and Mama Joy. Uh, they were our neighbors for a number of years and we love them very much and we could go there too, probably. Uh, but uh, of all places, we love coming here and we love Bishop Jimmy and, and uh, Pastor Alice. I call her Mamacita. 
that, that special mother or, or little mother in, in Spanish. And, and the reason I love them so much is they're the same before you and away from you. Do you know what I'm saying? They don't have split personalities and they're real. And sometimes, not being critical of anybody in particular, uh, but if the Bible fits, they should wear it. Uh, not every time you go to a church is the guy that you see standing in front of you on Sunday the same man that you see on Monday. Amen? Amen. And I, am pre I appreciate the fact that they are real people and, and godly people. And it's encouraging to me. And I've been in the ministry for 45 years now. In five days, I turned 67. That's depressing. In fact, Bishop Jimmy and I are age mates, but I look so much younger than him. <laughs> but uh, thank you so much. Listen, today I want to... I want to teach, I had, pre, I had written an entire message and, and God threw it out the window. And I wrote this message uh, driving here and, and before the first service. So uh, if you don't like it, just you can blame me. But uh, I want to talk to you today about hope. Hope. Everybody say that, hope. And it's, it's a critical word. And you can't be saved without it. The scripture teaches us you're saved by hope. So let's pray right now. And I'm going to ask for a special anointing to make this word come alive. Father, in the name of Jesus, we've not come to Shiloh to seek a man or to seek the wisdom of a man or the touch of a man. But we've come here today to seek your face, to hear your voice, to receive a touch from you. I take authority over every distraction, every hindrance, every mind game that's being played in people's hearts and minds right now. And I pray that the teacher, the Holy Spirit, would teach us all things and bring all things to our remembrance whatsoever Jesus has said unto us. And I thank you that the result of that will be peace. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give I unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Turn in your Bibles, if you wouldn't mind, to the book of Hebrews chapter 11. In verse 1 and 2. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're, you're sure looking better this week than you did last week. Just go ahead and tell him that. Ask him if it was a makeover, if they had a makeover. Could have had a make makeover, you know. Amen. Hallelujah. If you see me referring to my phone, it's not that I'm, I'm going through social media. I'm, I actually have my notes <laughs> written uh, in this instead of uh, like I normally would because I wrote this on the fly. So forgive me. Amen. <clears throat> Hebrews 11, um, do you have that on the screen? Yes, it is. All right. Now, let's read this together out loud. It says, now faith is, keep going. Look, we act like none of us have been to school. Let's try that one more time. Now faith is. Keep going. Boy, the testing is going to really be hard if we can't read. 
Let's try one more time. I help you this time. I want you to get this in your spirit. Now, faith is the substance of things and the evidence of things not seen. Now, notice this, that faith is the substance of your hope. And your hope is made up of things you cannot see. Now, put this in your notes. Hope lives in tomorrow. If hope is today, it's no longer hope. Hope is always in the future. And hope believes this. It believes that God can do something for you. Now, there are a lot of people that have trouble believing that God would do anything for them. Do you know what I'm saying? But hope says that God can do it for me. He's big enough to do it for me. Faith says he will. But hope says he can. So you begin with believing God can do it for you. Convince yourself of that. If you can find a promise in the Bible concerning something that you need or want, it becomes the foundation for hope. If God did it for them, he could do it for me. That's how hope talks. Now, if you're asking for something that God doesn't promise anybody, you're in trouble. You know, I had this man come and say, you know, if if God would just Take my wife home. I promise I'll pick a better one the next time. Now, how many of you realize that's... that's, uh, I said, why don't we pray similar? Why don't we pray that you get taken home and she does better the next time? Do do you see how foolish we can pray the, the most ridiculous prayers that have no chance of being answered because there's no foundation for what you're asking for in the Bible. So you must begin with, is there a promise in the Bible, or or, or find more than one, find two or three that say, yes, God wants you to have that. If you can find two or three, then you you can now begin the process of receiving. But receiving begins with, now faith is the substance of what I hope for. Are you getting this? Let's go to Hebrews chapter 11. And we're going to read uh, eight... uh, Eight through twelve. Rhonda, uh, do you have a, a microphone down there? C- can, can you just help me uh, preach a little bit? I, I, I want Rhonda to read it, and you can follow along on the screen. She's just going to help me because I'm straining my voice just a little bit. So go ahead, honey. Hebrews 11, verse 8 through 12. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. By faith he dwelt in the land of promise, as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he waited for the city which was foundation, which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. By faith Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed, and she bore a child when she was past the age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man and him as good as dead 
were born as many as the stars of the sky and multitude, innumerable as the sand which is by the seashore. Now, I want you just to, in your imagination, picture that Abraham and Sarah were promised a baby. Now, they were promised late anyway. But I just want you to picture them being at Carrefour or at Navis. He's a hundred and she's 90 and they're buying diapers. Not for great, great grandchildren, but for by faith, they're buying diapers for the baby they will have. I used to do that. I, I used to go buy, buy diapers by faith. But when you're in your 30s, there's that's no, that's no, you know, they think you're a little crazy anyway. But, but think now. You're watching this lady. She's 90 and she's, she's believing God for a baby. Now this is why hope begins with, do you believe God can? Now, I want to ask you, is it any more difficult for God to help a 90-year-old have a baby than to help a 30-year-old? Does, does age really make any difference? I mean, I prayed with, I prayed with a girl. I, you know, I, I said, please, just don't ask me to pray if you don't want it. She said, I want twins, but I only... I have one ovary and it, it, the doctor said, doesn't work anymore. And I said, you want twins? Okay, we prayed. She got twins. But the, the problem was not the ovary. The problem was the faith. Can she believe that God can do it? And then would, does she believe that God will do it now? They're in America right now. They don't even, boys don't even know if they're boys anymore. And boys are going, you know, think they're going to have babies. Now, there, there is a word for that. And since we're in mixed company, I'll, I'll just spell it D U M B. That's just dumb. Because God said he, male and female, He created them. You know, we're, we're there, they're now saying there's 43 different genders. No, there's 43 different types of crazy people. But God had never made a mistake. He made, he made Adam, Adam, and Eve, Eve, not Bob and Steve. Okay? There, so you can ask, if you're asking for something that is contrary to the truth of the scripture, you can ask until you turn blue and he's not obligated to fulfill your foolishness. Oh, yes. So let's begin with asking for things that God promised us. Amen. Are you with me now? Yes. My God can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He can do anything, but he won't do anything if it's not promised. I guess he could. No, he can't because it's against nature. He says in Romans chapter 1 that you leave, you leave the worship of God and you go, you go crazy. And, and you start think, you know, exchanging the natural use of a man for a woman. You, you just go crazy. People go crazy without Jesus in their heart. And what, what this world needs is a healthy dose of Jesus Christ. They need the truth, and the truth will set them free. Amen. Now, thank God for America. America's done a lot of good things, and America's done a lot of bad things. America is not our Savior. Neither is President Ruto.
Our Savior is Jesus Christ. Amen. And our faith is in Him. Now, we need, we need the presidents and we need all the help we can get. But I'm telling you that, that our Savior is Jesus. And anything, look, a politician can promise you a lot of things. But Jesus, if he promised you one thing, he promised to do it for you. No matter how difficult, no matter how hard it is, I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, he will do what he promised to do for you. But you have to decide. Because sometimes, I'm sure this has never happened in your family, but Sometimes we make ourselves the exception. It's as if God will do it for everybody but me. Well, that's, that's a problem you're going to have to overcome. But why are you so special? That the promises of God fit everyone but you. Turn to your neighbor and say, He will do for you what He promised. Say it to your neighbor. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, you think they were so excited about the first service, and you're, you're just being boring now. <laughs> no, I'm just getting started. We're getting ready to have a little bit of fun here. I want you to turn uh, to Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 12. And Rhonda, if you'll help me again to, to, to preach this. To, you just read the whole thing. Ephesians 2.12, that at the time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Now, I want you to notice that there's no more desperate. You think it's bad being, bring that back up for me. It says, being aliens. You think being an alien is bad. Worse than being an alien, or from some other planet, or from some other country, worse is being without hope. There is no more desperate circumstance than you and I can have than we've lost our hope. Now, there is a very special man. Now, I didn't introduce you last time, but Boney is... Uh, uh, Rhonda's and I's, uh, he's my right hand. And doesn't he look handsome? And no, he's not eligible. We, we're, he, he's, 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 he's taken by Jesus. He, he can't get married for at least 20 years. We, we've made him, he's off the market. I need him more. But Boney is a good man. And Boney has been my friend and, and, uh, the only one that I have known in this country longer than Boney is Bishop Jimmy. I met Bishop Jimmy first. Uh, but Boney is, is, is my brother and my son. You know, I, he, we have the same age difference as I did with my own dad. So it's just, it's fun uh, knowing that. But uh, Boney and I do, uh, and Rhonda do a lot of ministry among the Maasai, and I think I've told you a little bit of that in the past, but I just want to briefly touch on, there's a man, his name is Nikyu, and it means giant anthill. Now, I'm trying to figure out why his mother would call him giant anthill. Can, can you figure that one out? So we left off the anthill, and we've nicknamed him Big, Mr. Big. Now, he's 96. And you know, when you're 96, you have a long view of life. Nothing happens. The older you get, the less things impact you because you have time in which to, to see the context. When you're a young person, you know, in, anything that happens can can be such a shock and it's like the end of the world and when you're a father or a grandfather which I am I not only have married the most beautiful woman in the world but I've got three children and five grandchildren
But as you get older, what, what my grandchildren think is the end of the world, I realize is, is not going to be a problem past supper. <laughs> it really isn't. But for, depending on your perspective, you know, to them, it's the, it, big, little things become the biggest things in the world. Don't they? Now, God has a long view of life. Nick you. Uh, or Mr. Big has a long view of life. He's got the benefit of having, seeing every difficulty, every problem in the context of 96 other years. And so Maasai men tend to not be, they don't overreact much the older they get. When I met him, it was last no, no, November, December, we, Rhonda and I were out giving food out, you know, at Christmas like you do, you, being a blessing. And, and we, we ran into to Mr. Big, and he was sitting under an acacia tree, which is not unusual for a Messi man. And he and I got to talking, and we talked for three hours. And what I knew was a bad problem among the Maasai, this, this drought that had hit, took on a different perspective when I heard it coming from his mouth. Now, the, the Maasai have adopted me. They, they, they made me an elder. Uh, they, they gave me a name. My name is Alomaniac. <laughs> they, 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 they gave me the... I have to wear this to remind me, I guess, my name. They gave me a black stick that has a name. It was the stick of a chief. It's, it's called Isiri Neruk, and when, you're, when, you, when they give you a stick and the stick has a name, you know it's an important stick. Yes. You know, if they gave me a stick and it's just named Stick, probably wouldn't have meant much. Yeah. But this one had a name, and in any village I go to, they recognize that stick. They say that there's a twin to it, that it was cut from the same root. And the other one is in the hands of uh, Dr. Ruto. So they know this stick. This stick has meaning to them, and it, it speaks to them. And so I don't have to go in and do a long introduction of who I am. The fact that I have that stick, and my name is Alomaniac, which means blessing, by the way. And thank you, I am a blessing. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. But uh, so he and I got right into the conversation that usually they don't want to have with an outsider. They don't tell you what's... They, they don't, you know, there's a very... Uh, a blessed and unique culture that you have. You all share that as a, a heritage, no matter what your, your background. Those people are a blessing to you, and your, your nation makes a lot of money off of them. I'm telling you, 12% of your, uh, your, your, your uh, gross domestic uh, product comes from uh, tourism. And most, they don't come to see the, 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 they don't come to see the Kikuyus make money. They, they don't come to see the, 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 the combas or the, the kissies or the, the, the luyas. They don't want to, they, they really don't, they may like farming, but they're not going to come see the farming. They, they don't come see lules. They don't come see the, the tessos. They don't even come to see the midjikandas. They come to see the Maasai. And so thank God for those people and keep them in prayer because as I told you, they're having a great deal of problem and and since 2019, nearly 90,000 now have died from drought and from, from drought-related problems. And that's a lot. And they've lost 91% of their cows. And that's uh, over, uh, it's about 9 million. Cows are gone now. And so without a miracle from heaven, they're not going to be a tribe in about uh, 10 to 15 years. They will cease to be a tribe. But God. Did you hear what I just said? It's impossible but God. And God has a miracle for those people. Just like he would have one for you. Now, just tell your neighbor that a, a Maasai without a cow is like a Kikuyu without a bank account. Go ahead. Just tell them. It's the truth. I'm telling you. If you're watching by YouTube, you know it's to be the truth also. It's just the truth. But when, when they say they have no cows left they're in really bad trouble well uh, uh mr big tells me he said dr ron he said i or he calls me lomaniac he says lomaniac he said uh i don't think i'm going to survive this 
That's the first time I'd ever heard an older Messiah ever say anything like that. Again, because of his long view of life. And he says, and I don't think my clan will survive. In fact, I don't think the Messiah will survive. 20 years will be gone. And it got quiet just like this. And I said to him, I said, I said, Nick, you, if I don't know what I can do, but the next time I see you, I'm going to bring hope and help. Amen. Okay. Now, we had a good prayer, and, and I didn't see him for a long time. Six months. And during that time, we, I, I, you know, God, this, this is so desperate. And the further we looked and the more we examined the trouble, it, is from, it goes from Voy all the way to the Serengeti, all the way to the Mara, all the way up to Nehruk, all the way up to Samburu land. I'm talking all of them are having a great deal of difficulty and are in trouble. And I said, God, what can... Well, first, I had to believe that God could do something. And that he could use me to help do it. So once a plan began to come in my mind, the mess I trust, I, I went to see, first thing, I went to see Bishop Mark, my friend. And I said, Bishop Mark, I don't know, I, you seem to have a very, you know, you have wisdom. And I, I, I don't know, it, are, are Rhonda and I just, are we just, tell, help us here. And, and, and God moved that man with compassion. And he said, I don't know how you're going to do it, but I believe that God can do it. Amen. Do you hear the, 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 the language of hope? God can do it. Amen. And so we had a good prayer that day. And he said, he asked God to, to give me help. Amen. And so that was March the 6th. And then the next person I came to see was Bishop Jimmy. And I said, Bishop Jimmy, I got the faith of our, our, our brother, our, our, the overseer. Now I need wisdom. And he gave me some wisdom. I'm telling you, it was wisdom. And I began, he introduced me to some people. And he, do you know what I'm saying? When you need, when you need a word, you need a word. Yeah. You, don't need, you don't need words. You need a word. And he gave me one, and I'm telling you, one day I'll give you the whole story, but it worked out better than he and I thought. Now, a process that's supposed to take 15 months to form a trust in your country, it took us 120 days. Huh? Well, it was 90 days, but then we had to get the nonprofit, and that was another month, so 120 days. So now we have a trust. We even have a bank account. We have no money. But that's like saying, if you have a, a bottle, but no water, at least you have something that if God gives you water, you have something to put it in. So I've got something to put it in. Now, I'm going back. I, I said all that to say, to bring you to the point where, Nick, you said, I have no hope. Now, I don't know if you've ever been in that place. How many of you ever been into a place where you were up against such a big problem that you saw no way out? Anybody here? Oh, you're the only congregation in all of Kenya that never comes into problems. <laughs> Shiloh, is this it? How many of you have run into a problem that is just was bigger than you were? Yes, it's everybody. So... Nick, you had gone, he had had 192 cows when I saw him last, and his last cow died at the end of May. Now he has no cows, he has no goats, he has nothing. And the pastor told me when I called him at, at the end of May, we have not seen him, he has gone home to die. Well, he tells me on, he's not dead yet, so don't, don't, it's like, oh my gosh, now we, have, we didn't have a funeral, 
Of course, there are no funerals out there because you have to get buried that day. Anyway, so on June the 10th, this man hasn't eaten in two, three weeks. He's now, his breakfast consists of a cup of hot water because he has no tea. So he drinks a cup of, he gets up early like he always has his whole life, but there's no cows to tend. There's no goats. He has no food. He has nothing. He has hot water. And he said that day, his strength is beginning to go. He, he's, he's, he's come to the end of himself. He's come to the very end of all the resources he has. And he says, I, I, he says, Alomaniac, I went for a walk. I thought it would be the last time I was going to pray one more time. I, I, I was going to ask God for help one more time. Amen. And that morning he walked around his boma and he shuffled. If you see him, he's, he's bent over. And he's, you, you can just see him just shuffling. I can see him in my spirit. Just shuffling along, God. If, if you don't help me, I, I'm finished. My, my family's finished. My clan is finished. The mass are finished. We, we, we have no hope. But you, you're it. We're down. We're down to just God. He didn't realize. Boney, Rhonda, myself, and a few others in this humble little caravan were already on our way. You see, God heard that prayer. Even though it was uttered on the 10th, God knew he would pray. And he was sending an answer on a prayer that hadn't even been offered yet. Knowing that he would pray. So don't ever stop praying. Don't ever give up on God. He hasn't given up on you. And whatever your problem is, Whatever challenges you're facing, he's big enough to take care of it. Amen. 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 So, I send word to the pastor of that little church, it's a deliverance church out there in the middle of nowhere. I said, please, pastor, send a boda boda to pick up my, my friend Nick Yu and his wife who's now blind. She got an eye infection. There's no health care out there. No way to get treatment. Now she's blind. Can you imagine? A 96-year-old man now and a blind wife. You talk about difficult. Don't tell me about your problems. I'm just going to tell you right now. We, if you are sitting here in this church, you don't have the same problems that Nick Yu has. Are you with me? There, there is no uh, uh, quick mat right down the street. He lives out in the... There's no water. The, the nearest well is 25 miles. Or there's one well within 25 miles. That's it. Turn to your neighbor and say, that you just look beautiful today. I got to get some... People got to smile a little bit. Now, that next day, we showed up at his church. There were 800 people there. They didn't know what was coming. But that little mess I trust, we had, we had an angel donor, gave enough money to just get us so we could go give something. So we, we brought a, a water tank. Had 5,000 liters. We brought a water tank. Uh, uh, a water, what, not a water tank, a water carrier, a, 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 a water truck. We brought a tank that had, could hold 5,000 liters. We, we brought uh, five metric tons of food. Okay? And, 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 and so this little caravan shows up and we brought soap, you know, those big bars of soap so that everybody could, you know, whatever. And we, we, we brought uh, tea. Uh, sugar. Uh, we, we, what else did we bring, Boney? Beans. Beans, you know, we brought beans. Big sacks of beans. What else? Uh, ma maize. 90, 90 kg bag. We brought everything. We brought all. Just, 
I mean, it took us four hours, three and a half hours to hand out food. We handed out an equal amount to all families and 800 families went home and 800 families ate that night. Amen. That fed 2,500 people. All right, that's what a little trust, just an idea. Just one idea and a little hope produced a, a, a little breakthrough. Amen. Bishop said when he comes back, he's going to help me. I hope he let you help me. Yes. But you should have seen the look on Nick Hugh's face. Now I'm six foot two, you know, I can't hide. It's hard for me to hide in Kenya. Yes. He sees me get out and he, he, he does, he looks twice. Hello, Manjak. And I went over and Two old men crying because God didn't forget. He said, you came back. Are you with me? Yes. Hopeless. Without any, without any idea how God could do it. And God gave them a little breakthrough. Now, we've already been back, and since then, you have to see a picture of him from this broken over man to now. He stands up tall, and he's put weight on. And since then, he's, we, we've made sure that this man eats every day. And we planted him a garden. So now in, in, in uh, December, this Luya right here that knows how to, to turn dirt into food, he got out there with the neighbors and taught all the neighbors how to plant a little garden. Now they're going to have a garden. You see, it's just, it starts with, the, but it starts with the seed. It starts with hope. Yes. Yeah. Let me just say this. I'm going to say this about your bishop. Your bishop's going to, I think he's going to build. I didn't get to come. Rhonda came to the, to the turning of the dirt. Is that going to be up there, the new church? Yes. We're going to help him build that. Let me just give, how many of you are businessmen or businesswomen? Let me see. Let me see. Raise your hand. You're, you're, you own a business or you, you, you're, okay. Now, if you take care of God's business, God will take care of your business. Oh, yes. So if you need a breakthrough in your business, just put something in that business. Yes. And you watch what God does for you. Yes. Now, that's free. I won't charge you anything extra for that. <laughs> now, we're talking about hope. Am I down to seven seconds? Is that really the time I got left? Um, I have to, uh, Pastor, I need an extension of five minutes. Can I have an extension of five minutes? Since you represent the, can I, I can go finish this up a little bit? Because I need you to get, and Rhonda, you got, it says here you got to pay your credit card. It's all on my phone. I don't know why, but there's a note here. Praise the Lord. Amen. Go back to Hebrews 11, 1, and let me just, we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll preach this again for you. We had a whole different kind of service in the first service to the youth, and it was a whole, but I'm, I'm on something here that God's trying to say to this congregation today. Go, I tell you what, go, go to Romans 8, 24. We'll move here quickly. I got a five minute extension. Crying in front of the church. Gosh, what, what a mess. Jesus wept, so don't say anything about me. I'm... <laughs> Jesus looked down and saw he wept. It says, for we were saved in this hope. Oh, yes. But hope that is seen is not hope for why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Amen. Now, here's the thing I want you to understand. Abraham waited. He was a hundred 
His wife was 90. But they're still loving each other. Because if they didn't love each other, they were going to have a baby in the first place. The neighbors could say all they wanted to say about how impossible your problems are and how difficult you're having it. And they can mock you for believing God. But I'm going to tell you right now, God will never, ever rebuke you for asking for too much. And in this room today, there are problems. You come here, you look beautiful. This is the beautiful church. You, you look like everything's just going Great, but I know in my heart that some of you are up against some very difficult things that if God does not come through on your behalf, you're finished. And you know it. But God has not forgotten you. Now, I had written down for the other group. I couldn't give it to them. There's too many of them. But I got 60 promises for young adults. I was going to give one. But I, didn't have, I, I, I can't even afford to give every one of those promises. It's sheets worth, worth of promises. But the Bible, if you can find an answer, if you can find a, a promise that fits your problem, find two or three. Look them up. If you can find them and begin to remind God of what he said, it becomes to you like a credit card. Now, I have to use this illustration. Where do I, I, I lost my wallet. You have it? Thank God. Now, I'm, I'm hurrying. But they, they went long in their worship today. I'm blaming them. Hey, you know, I, I'm a Kenyan now. I got my own. Look at this. I'm real. I'm certified. Now, we're going we're gonna to pretend that this... This card right here, i and Bank card, is a, is a receipt. There was a store in the, in the 80s and 90s in the United States, very popular, it's called Service Merchandise. And during, in this store, they made these massive showrooms where you would go in there and you could find the finest of, of things to buy. But the way that you bought them is, is you would go and get a, a, a ticket number, write it down, go pay for it, and then you'd have to wait for it to, to either be shipped into the store or you'd have to wait for them to get it from the warehouse. Are you with me now? Yes. So it, let's say you were going to go in and you wanted to buy that drum set. You bought the, the, the guitar. You bought the, you bought the whole band set, okay? And, and let's say it cost a, a million shillings. And, and um, ah, 10 million. And so you go in and you, 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 you say, I don't have that money. I mean, I got to pay that much? And so here you, you've got the desire, but you don't have the money. How, how many would say that's a problem? When, when you want something, but you don't have the money. Now, if, if, if that's a problem and I said to you, well, listen, just, just use my credit card. You say, well, what's the limit? Oh, no limit. Don't worry about it. Get, get what you want. Yes. Now, I, already women are starting to, you, you should see the look on your faces. All I said was credit card and unlimited. And some of you, you didn't even realize it. There was this beautiful little smile. It's like, wow. Now, if you use my card, how many of you could boldly go up to the, to, the, to the counter and pay for your, all the things that you wanted and you, would have, you could wait patiently for that to be delivered to you? How many could do that? Yes, because you're using my card. Now, if you have a problem and you can find in your Bible three promises, where God promises to meet that problem. Yes. You can take those three promises and he will exchange for you those promises for a receipt. Oh, yes. Now, with the receipt, I can go over here to Felix. He hides behind that over there and 
doing the TV and all that stuff or whatever over there. And that's the delivery window. Are you with me? And so you ever once in a while say, hey, Felix, you got, no, it's not in yet, not in yet. But you wait. Now, you already own it. You just don't possess it yet. That's how faith works. The promises are your receipt. God, you said, if I ask anything in your name, You said you would do it. You said if two of us shall agree as touching anything that they ask, it shall be done for them by our Father which is in heaven. Ask and receive that your joy may be full. I can go on and 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 on. But I take those promises and I, I take them to God and I say, God, I'm not asking for something forbidden. I'm not asking for something questionable. I'm asking for what you have promised. And what God does is he takes that, my confidence in his promises, and he gives me a receipt and says, just wait. And you will get what you've asked for. Last point. If you're asking for Mendazis at the, the little corner and a, 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 little, a little thing of tea, you don't have to wait long. But if you're asking for a husband, you, you don't want God to rush that. I know some, some in the, the first service I told you, you women, are, if, if anyone came along and said, would you marry me? You'd say yes, and it'd be it. You would just, you're, you're so ready just for marriage, and I'm telling you right now, you don't want to marry the wrong one. You want to wait for God's best because that can take a little while. Now, if you want to buy a bicycle, you probably don't have to wait long. But if you want a Mercedes, you might have to wait. Yes. Now, you don't want the guy to bring you a Mercedes that he can get to you in 15 minutes. Probably stolen. <laughs> May not have an engine. Important things. Write this down. Important things. Good things. Valuable things. Take time. Now, I asked Rhonda in the last service, does she, do you still have that beautiful diamond I gave you when I asked you? Uh, huh? Is that real? I mean, they, they make them now. You can, you, you can 3D print it. I mean, you can go to a store and they say it's almost, it looks just like a real diamond. How many ladies know what I'm talking about. There's the almost looking like a diamond and then there's the real diamond. How many of you want the real thing? Then you have to be w willing to wait for that. All right, now, do you have all the other things? I got? You got the beautiful watch, you got more than one. Where's the other watch? I bought you more than one. <laughs> let, let me ask you, does your husband take good care of you? Extremely. Was he worth the wait? Okay. Now, <laughs> look, I hope it's 67 year. <laughs> but if it's important, don't rush God. Just say, say, God, look, if I'd rather you take a little time to get me the right woman. I'd, I'd rather, I'd rather, I'd rather, I'd rather wait. That's called patience. Now, there's a lot more to this message, and I, am, I, I can't go there today. Maybe Bishop will let me share some more of this later. But have you learned something today? One thing I want you to have in your heart is, is get your hope back. God's not finished. There are promises in there if you'll look. And if you need a little help, 
write me a note. I'll help you find some. But there are promises in there covering just about anything that you can imagine. And if you'll find two or three of those and start reminding God, you can exchange those promises for a receipt called faith. And it, he, faith is today. I, I, I gave her the receipt. But I have the receipt, but I don't possess it yet. It doesn't mean that it's not mine. It just means I don't have it yet. And some of you have waited a long time for good things to happen. And you think that God has forgotten you. He has not forgotten. He looks at those promises that you remind him of every day. And he said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. I'll never turn my back on you. Now, God's not done with you. And the best is yet to come. Lift your hands if you'd like me to pray for you. What a different service. But we had, we had, we had a different group, didn't we, Mom? Come up here with me. Come here, Rhonda. Let's, if, if you have something that you've been waiting for, lift up both hands. If there's something you're just, it's a long time coming. Lord, you see all the, the, hand, the double hands raised. That means people here, God, they, they're, they haven't lost hope. They, they're trusting in the name that is above every name. They believe the promise that if I ask anything in Jesus' name, he'll do it for me. What they're asking for are good things. They're not things forbidden. So God, I come into agreement with every hand that is raised, every life that is represented, every person in this place. And I agree for a miracle breakthrough to come on their behalf. I see financial breakthrough coming. I see this church being paid for with cash out of the miracle money that's going to come out of this church. I see business deals coming together that had no chance. I see opportunities that were never going to come your way. They have turned around and they're now looking for you. Rhonda and I thank God for sending us to such a church as this that stands in faith. Lord, we pray for the bishop. And pastor, as they're away, we cover them with the blood. Get them back here safely to us. But while they're gone, keep this church. When they get back here, let the church be in better shape than it was when they left here. We pray for Nick Hugh today and the Maasai people. Lord, we, we, we just need money. We've got the ideas. We've got the ways to help them. But there are 1.8 million of them that are dying. So, Lord, if it means blessing me with an extra million or two so I can help, then send the million to me. I'll be faithful to put it in the right place. I trust you now to do what I can't do and to help those who are most precious and important to me. In the name of Jesus.